Yo, what up my Cornerstone homies? Um, today is a continuation of the purchasing that we were doing yesterday using money, 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 money. Okay, so we're at the outlet mall. Probably the Providence Place Mall. Okay, how much does it cost? Find the amount of money. Here is a comic book, and I love comic books. All right, and it costs $6.20. Okay. So the $6 are going to be shown here. The zero on the left side of the decimal point is going to change as we move dollar bills up into the box. And the 20 cents is going to be shown on the right side as we move coins up into the box. There's mud. Okay. All right. So the first thing we must do is put $6 into the box. And the easiest way to do that is to use a $5 bill and a $1 bill. But let's do it the hard way. We're going to use $1 bills. Okay, so we'll take $1 right here and put it right there. And you'll see that the number on the left side of the decimal point has changed to a 1. We shall move another dollar. Now it's a 2. And another $1 bill. Now it's a 3. And another $1 bill. Now it's a 4. And another one dollar bill. Now it's a five. And one more dollar bill. And now we have six. Now we need to make 20 cents. We have to use the coin over here. One of the coins. Which coin is worth 10 cents? Because we're going to use the 10 cent coin. Is it this one, the quarter? Is it the dime? Is it the nickel? Is it the penny? Which one do you think? If you said the dime, you are correct. So we move the dime up, and the numbers on the right side are going to change. Point. Now it says six ten, six dollars and ten cents. Now we're going to move another dime over, and it's six dollars and. 20 cents and the box turned green which means we're right okay so just to be clear as mud the six dollars are shown right here the 20 cents is shown right here oops all right Okay, on to the next one. All right, now we have a baseball cap for $7.45. This time we shall use a five. So we take a $5 bill. Let me zoom in here. Just so you know the difference, the $5 bill has a picture of Abraham Lincoln, who was the president during the Civil War, and he freed the uh, slaves. He got rid of slavery. And on the right side is the $1 with George Washington, the first president of the United States. And he was also a commander in chief of the armed forces during the American Revolution. And you'll see that the $5 bill has little fives in the corners, whereas the $1 bill has little ones in the corners. But they're both pieces of money. And money we use to buy things, which we're practicing right now. Um, so if you want to go to the store and get something you like, something you like, like a comic book or a video game or a DVD, like a movie or something, you use money. Uh, there are other ways to use money. Okay. You can open up your wallet and use your debit card. 
That's what I usually do, but I also check online to make sure other people aren't using my debit card. And you should too. In your wallet, you also have things like your ID. Okay, there's me and my ID. And I also have my health insurance card. Okay, when I need to go see the doctor. All right, and then your money, and you open the flap, and that's your billfold where you keep your dollars. All right. And the old fashioned way to pay for things is with a check. Here's a check from my checking account, Citizens Bank. And you can see that I've written void on it, V O I D. Because it's unsigned, all right, and I don't want people to use it, so I wrote void. It's an old check. Check number is over here in the upper right hand corner. You write the date over here. You write the money amounts, whatever you're writing the money, the check for right here. And also. Hold on a second. <laughs> it's been a while. You write the money amount right here in this box. And you also write the money amount in words right here. Pay to the order of. I mean, you write who you're writing the check to right here. Pay to the order of. And then you write it, the money amount in words. We're going to be exploring that a little bit later in this lesson. Okay. So again, this baseball cap costs seven dollars and forty-five cents. All right, seven dollars. I'm going to be shown right here on the left side of the decimal point, and the forty-five cents is going to be shown over here on the right side of the decimal point. All right, so we're going to start by putting a five right up here, five dollar bill. And then five plus one, one, two, three, four, five plus one is six. So we're going to put a one up here, and that's six dollars. Now we need another one dollar. <laughs> now we need another dollar to make seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right. All right, now we need to make 45 cents. And the first thing we need to make 45 cents is the coin that is worth 25 cents. Which coin is worth 25 cents? Is it the quarter right here, the quarter? The dime right here? The nickel right here? Or the penny right here? Which one is worth 25 cents? That's right, you guessed it. The quarter is worth 25 cents. So now we have five, six, seven dollars and 25 cents. Now we need to move up by 10 cents. We need to add 10 cents to the 25 cents. And which coin did we use in the last example to make 10 cents? Penny, the nickel, the dime, the quarter? You're right. The dime is worth 10 cents. So now we have $7 and pink 35 cents. You can see that, see that change over there. So we have $7.35. Cents. We need one more dime to make it $7.45. There it is. Okay, so $7.45. That's what it looks like. A, a $5 bill, a $1 bill. And another dollar, uh, a $5 bill, two $1 bills, a quarter, and two dimes. Alrighty. Our next item up for bid is a soccer ball. Exciting. All right. And it's $8.50. So we need to make $8. And it's going to be very much like we made the $7.00 on the last example, except it's going to take an extra dollar. 
to make it. All right. So, super one. All right. Okay, so let's start with the change this time. All right. How do you make 50 cents? Is it two pennies? Do you make 50 cents with two nickels? Do you make 50 cents with two dimes? Do you make 50 cents with two quarters? What do you think? Do you think? You are correct. You use two quarters to make 50 cents. So now watch this number down here. It's highlighted in orange. Change. Point, point 0.25. Add another quarter and it's point, point 50, 50 cents. Now we need to add our $8. So we're going to take a $5 bill, put it right up there at equal, that's worth five $1 bills. Now we're going to take a $1 bill, add it to the $5 bill, that's five, one, two, three, four, five. And then we add a $1 bill and that's six. Now we need another $1 bill, and that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, okay, boink, and then one more dollar bill, we'll make 8, 8.50, there we go, so the soccer ball costs $8.50, you can see that the number here on the left side of the decimal point changed to 8, because we put a 5, Plus one is six, plus one is seven, plus uh, one is eight. So you get your eight dollars here. Get your eight dollars here. You get your 50 cents here. And you have your 50 cents here. All right. All right. Now in this next part, we're going to be using the one up, the one dollar up strategy. Okay. Which is so important. Okay. So, if you have something that costs one, two, three, four, five, six dollars and ninety cents, you can use one, two, three, four, five, six, seven dollars to pay for that because the seventh dollar will cover the ninety cents. You can pay ninety cents by using a dollar. And you'll get change back a dime all right so mario wants to get lunch at the providence place mall he buys a sandwich for six dollars and ninety cents how much does the sandwich cost well it's right here folks six dollars and ninety cents so we're going to write it right over here we got to type it all right all right, $6.90. How many dollars should he pay if he's using the $1 up method? All right. Well, like I said before, he's going to use one, two, three, four, five, six, seven dollars to pay the, uh, for the sandwich that costs $6.90. All right, so we're going to type 7.00. What does seven dollars look like in dollars? Well, it looks like this one, a two, a three, a four, a five, a six, and seven. All right, so there are your seven dollars one two three four five six seven and that's what seven looks like in numbers all right seven point zero zero okay in this next scenario keisha is buying a gift at the outlet mall the providence place mall she buys a bracelet for seven dollars and eighty five cents all right how much does the bracelet cost 
$7.85. So we're going to type 7.85. All right, how many dollars should she use to pay? She needs to use one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then one more dollar, eight, for the 85 cents. So she's going to pay eight dollars and get 15 cents back. All right, now we shall go below and make our eight dollars. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, there's our eight dollars. All right, and that's what eight dollars looks like. So eight dollars will pay for the bracelet, which costs seven dollars and eighty-five cents. Okay, Mario wants to buy lunch at the Providence Place Mall. He buys a salad for eight dollars and ninety-five cents. Alrighty then, how much does the salad cost? Eight ninety-five. And we're going to write that right over here. I'm going to type that. Eight, eight ninety-five. How many dollars should he use to pay? Well, I will show you first. I'm going to use one, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight. Now that's going to cover. Hold on a second. That's going to cover the eight dollars on the left side of the decimal point. So you have your eight bucks right here. Buck is another name for dollar. And to cover the 95 cents, we're going to use one more dollar up. All right. So we're going to add one more dollar. All right. So the $8 covers the eight in the number. And then the one dollar here covers the 95 cents. So in total you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine dollars, right? To cover the price to pay for the eight dollar and 95 cent salad. So let's type that over here because they want us to. Oops, I'm sorry. We're taking nine dollars over here because that's what we used. Alrighty. Okay, Keisha is buying a gift at the at the Providence Place Mall. She buys a jump rope for five dollars and fifty cents. All right. What does the jump rope cost? Five fifty. I'm going to write that right over here. I'm going to typewrite it. That's what we used to call word processors back in the day, typewriters. <laughs> All right, your parents will probably remember that. <clears throat> Maybe. <laughs> How many dollars should Keisha use to pay for the jump rope? Well, let's find out. All righty. All right, so she needs to pay $5.50 for the jump rope. 5.5 5 0. All right. So 
So she needs to pay five fifty. So we're going to put our five dollars in to cover the to pay for the five dollars on the left side of the decimal point. One, two, three, four, and five. All right, that's going to cover our five dollars. Now we need to cover the 50 cents using the $1 up strategy. So to cover the 50 cents, we're going to put another dollar in right over here. So six dollars, one, two, three, four, five, six, will cover, will pay for five dollars and fifty cents, and you'll get fifty cents back. So let's just type six dollars in here. And we are done with that one. We paid for the jump rope with six dollars. Okay, in this last part for today's lesson, we're gonna get really tricky. And we're um, going to have to add up all these things that Raj wants to buy at the Providence Place Mall. Okay, so Raj has $20. He wants to buy a baseball hat and a soccer ball. The baseball hat costs $4.95, and the soccer ball costs $5.30. He also wants to buy a goal, which is down here, the net that you kick the soccer ball into. The goal costs four dollars and sixty cents. Does he have enough money to buy all of the items? Well, let's find out. All right, so the baseball hat costs four ninety five. So let's type that in there or write that in there. All righty. All right, how much does the soccer, soccer ball cost? Well, the soccer ball costs five dollars and thirty cents. So let's type in five dollars and thirty cents. Okay. All right. What's the total cost of the baseball hat and the soccer ball? So now we have to add $5.30 plus $4.95. And that's going to be seven, I'm sorry, $10.25. So let's try that out. All right. How much money does he have? All right, so let's see. He has $20, right? So let's go back there. He has $20. So let's type in 20. How much money does he have left after spending $10.25? on the baseball hat the soccer in the soccer ball so you have to uh take away ten dollars and 25 cents from twenty dollars that's going to be using the minus sign or the takeaway sign and what does that look like okay and i think a lot of us know the minus sign looks like that. Okay. All right. So twenty dollars take away or minus twenty dollars minus ten dollars and twenty five cents will leave us with nine dollars and seventy five cents. All right, so we have $9.75 after buying the baseball hat and the soccer ball. So does Raj have enough money, enough money to buy the goal? 
after he buys the baseball hat and the soccer ball. Let's see, the goal costs four dollars and sixty cents. So I don't know if they want a yes from us or a no, so I'll try typing yes. Yep, he does. Okay, now we get interesting here. Raj does not want to use cash. All right, he wants to use a check from his checking account. All right, so we're gonna help Raj write out a check. All right, he will write out a check to the outlet mall. Normally, there would be a specific store in the outlet mall that we'd be writing the check to. You know, like a store that sells soccer balls and stuff like that. You know, maybe Walmart. Um, okay, so for the first thing you have to do when you write out a check is you have to type in the date. So we're going to type in today's date, which is 4, which stands for April. 28, which stands for today, April 28th, and then 2021, which is the year. All right. So April 28th, 2021, Wednesday. Pay to, well, it says to do the outlet mall, but let's, let's type the Providence. Let's, hmm, what would be a store in the Providence Place Mall? Ah, whatever, we'll just do the outlet mall. Okay, we're going to write the outlet mall right here on this line. Because that's what you have to do with the check. You have to write who you're writing the check to. All right, now we have to write how many dollars we're writing the check for. And let me just erase that and the goal costs four dollars and sixty cents all right so we have to write four dollars and sixty cents online right on the line right here so we're going to type four point six zero all right now we have to write it out in words, and that can be a little tricky. So we have to write for F O U R, and then we have to write and A N D for and. Oh, we're supposed to write a fraction here. I'm not sure how we're going to do that. Uh, oh, I know. <laughs> Okay, hold on a second. Usually when I write a fraction, I write. All right, so. All right, so cents, okay, can also be represented by a fraction. All right. Now I have to show you that. Hold on. All right, so 60 cents, <clears throat> you can write it. Uh, I can't write outside the line, it's a drag. 60 cents, you can write it this way. Point six zero or you can write it as a fraction you can write six zero over 100 okay because 100 pennies equals one dollar so when you write six when you write 60 over 100 what you're saying is 60 pennies out of 100 pennies. You're only paying 60 out of 100 pennies. So you're paying 60% of a dollar, okay? And do you know who was the person responsible for um, giving us this fraction system or fractional system of money? Who first suggested it? It was Benjamin Franklin, who was the guy pictured on the $100 bill. And you may have also seen a picture of him flying a kite in the rain <laughs> you know, to prove that lightning was electricity, which 
That's a very dangerous thing to do, and never, never, never do that, okay? All right, he didn't know what he was doing back then. Uh, he didn't know how dangerous it was back then. But anyways, Benjamin Franklin, a fraction, fractional system of money, and we use it today. So we have to write 60 over 100. Now, we can't write the 60 over the 100 over here. The line only lets us write, write it a certain way. So we're going to have to write type 60 slash 60, zero, zero. And then we have to make a dotted line that goes all the way to the end. All right. And the reason why we do that is so that nobody can write in extra money. Because somebody could just write like no, four and sixty over a hundred, and um, you know, like another seventy dollars. You know, like another like seventy, and then they could just like just cross this out and change it to seventy four sixty. You know, and then they could you know get more money out of your checking account than you want to give them. All right, so. It's a good idea to write on the line what you're writing the check for. And this is, he's writing it for a goal. The, you know, the goal, the net. So he's going to write it for the goal. So we're going to type goal. And over here we have to sign our name. Now we could sign Raj's name or we can sign your name or we can sign my name we're going to sign my name so we're going to type matthew marola that's me all right so that's it that's how you write a check all right so thank you my cornerstone pals that's it for this lesson and next comes the song so stay tuned <laughs> Things in life are free, but you can keep them for the birds and bees. I want money, that's what I want, that's what I want, that's what I want, yeah, that's what I want. Money don't get everything, it's true, what it don't get, I can use. I want money. That's what I want, that's what I want, that's what I want, yeah, that's what I want. Money don't get everything is true. What it don't get, I can use. I want money. That's what I want. That's what I want. That's what I want. Yeah. That's what I want. Now give me money. Yeah. A whole lot of money. What I want. I want you to give me. Oh, a lot of money. That's what I want. Yeah. That's what I want. Thank you. That was Marianne on the tambourine.